Welcome Year 8, this is Lesson 1 on your Forces, Waves and Generating Electricity booklet. You should have this booklet in front of you. Please make sure that you write in your name and class onto the front cover. Right here. Then let's move on to lesson one. What are forces? Well, <clears throat> a force can be a push, a pull, or a twist. And you've got some examples there. When you push a door open, you have to apply a force to the door. Number two, you also have to apply a force to pull open a drawer. And number three, in order to drink a bottle of water, you have to twist or turn the cap off. You need to put pull, push, or twist into the correct box below. <laughs> nice and easy to start off with. Now you would find life difficult without exerting forces. Write out three sentences in your books that involve an everyday event that requires a push, a pull, or a twist. You get to write this down. Have a think now. Something that you pull on. You could pull your socks up in the morning. Push. You could push a light switch in order to turn it on. Or twist. You could turn a tap in order to get water from the tap itself. If you can come up with a couple more examples other than what I have done, that would be great. Pause the video for a second whilst you complete this uh, task. Now let's move on. You cannot see a force, but often you can see what it does. It can change an object's speed. It can change an object's direction or movement, or it can cause an object to deform or change shape. Put these three sentences into the correct box. I'm going to pause the video again while you do that. Okay. Contact, oh sorry, forces can be contact forces like pulls, pushes or twists where objects must touch each other to exert a force. There are however forces that are non-contact they do not have to touch each other. This would include the force of gravity, and you can see that right there. Or magnetism. We're going to be looking at magnets a little bit later on. That will go in the middle one. Yeah. Or forces due to static electricity. Look at this lady's hair all repelling each other due to static electricity. That's what we're going to move on to next. Static electricity. Okay, we're going to have a look at a, a, a video on static electricity using a Van de Graaff machine. You can also have a look on uh, the web for other videos on Van de Graaff machines and Tesla cages and, and lightning bolts as well, which would be really good. But before charging up the Van de Graaff machine, this sort of uh, metal ball, um, it contains a number of positive and negative charges. Let's read the paragraph now. A Van de Graaff machine uses friction to remove negatively charged electrons from its metal dome. This turns the metal dome from a neutral charge into a positive charge. So before it's charged up, the Van de Graaff machine has one, two, three, for five negative charges. It will also have 
the same number, so it, it has f uh, five positive charges, it'll also have the same number of negative charges. One, two, three, four, five. And they cancel each other out. So this is a neutrally charged object at the start. Then, when it's turned on, all the negative charges are scraped off. So we're only left with one, two, three, four, five positive charges. It is now positively charged. Positively charged. Let's have a look at this video now. And we can see sparks between the dome on the left and a smaller metal ball. The dome on the left is positively charged. It's after electrons. The ball on the left, so the ball on the right has those negative charges. So to explain, the van de Graaff machine has had all of its electrons, its negative charges removed. It is positively charged. The metal ball on the right hand side now still has lots of negative charges. One, two, three, four, five positives. So it's going to have one, two, three, four, five negatives. Now, when the wand, the small wand on the right hand side is brought towards the Van de Graaff machine, what happens is all those electrons move across. So the spark actually moves from the ball to the Van de Graaff machine and it is those negative charges crashing through the air, smashing into air particles that superheats up the air particles and creates that blue spark. So the spark actually moves towards the Van de Graaff machine. This hopefully answers questions one and two, and most importantly, question number three, which I'd like you to write up in your own words. That is the end of lesson one. If you've got any spare time, look on the internet and look for superheated sparks, lightning bolts. Find out three or four fascinating facts about lightning on planet Earth or indeed the solar system.